Hello, welcome to our online presentation on coronary artery disease. I am Dr. Richard Alexander. I'm a cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon at Memorial Hermann Southwest Heart and Vascular Institute. Uh, I am. I was born in upstate New York. I went to uh, State University of New York Upstate Medical Center for my medical degree and for my cardiac and thoracic surgery training. I did my general surgery training at University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston and have been at the Memorial Hermann Heart and Vascular Institute Southwest since 1983. Today we're going to talk about coronary artery disease. Uh, so what is coronary artery disease? Well, essentially it is the buildup of plaque within the wall of the artery. Since the outside diameter of the artery stays the same, uh, the buildup and widening of the plaque uh, in the wall narrows the lumen of the artery so it decreases the area that the blood can flow through. In, in addition, as the plaque builds up in the artery wall, the artery loses its flexibility so that it loses the ability to dilate and therefore loses the ability to increase the blood flow to the rest of the heart muscle when it is needed. Sometimes the blockages are located in one or two isolated areas, but commonly they're multicentric. Uh, if we look at the anatomy of the heart, we can see that there are two main coronary arteries. Uh, the right coronary artery supplies the right and inferior surface of the heart, and the left coronary artery has the left main artery first uh, for about a centimeter on the average, and then the left anterior descending coronary artery goes down the anterior or front surface of the heart, and the circumflex artery uh, goes around the left and lateral side of the heart. Uh, so why does a person get coronary artery disease? It's certainly multifactorial. Probably the most important uh, issue is the genetics, how you're born, how your family is. Uh, since there's really nothing we can do about your genetics, the things we concentrate on are those things that you can do something about. Probably the most important item that the person has control over is smoking. There's definitely been a relationship between smoking and an accelerated process of buildup of these plaques in the coronary arteries. Other things that are uh, contributory are, are your diabetes uh, and controlling sugars, controlling your uh, hemoglobin A1c uh, has been shown to improve your likelihood of decreasing the rate of production of blockages. Hypertension is also uh, important to be controlled. If you will, will look at the shock wave of pressure that the artery is exposed to with every heartbeat, you can envision that there might be micro fractures of the inside lining of the artery each time there is a, uh, a pulse coming through, and that uh, if you have little micro fractures, scar tissue can form, and these may be nidises or places where plaques can develop. Obesity, exercise and diet uh, seem to be related to the buildup of hardening of the arteries. So how significant is this problem? It's estimated about 325,000 people die each year in the United States from heart attacks before they reach the hospital. We feel that many of these deaths can be prevented if the signs and symptoms of coronary disease can be recognized and if the person and the people around them are geared towards uh, responding to this quickly. Certainly some heart attacks are intense and sudden, but most start slowly with mild pain, discomfort, uh, or other angina equivalents that we will talk about. Uh, and if one addresses these before they become sudden and intense, that maybe some of the de these deaths can be prevented. So what are the warning signs of coronary disease? Uh, certainly the most uh, common one is chest discomfort. This is the one that almost everybody knows about. It can be in the left side of the chest or the center of the chest. <clears throat> it may last a few minutes and go away or it may recur. Some people describe a pressure, squeezing, fullness or pain. Some people describe a band around their chest. Some people say that there's a heavy weight uh, sitting on their chest. But there are other signs other than just chest pain. Uh, shortness of breath with or without the chest pain can be an important sign. If you will look at the heart as a pump uh, and the pump needs 
blood going to it in order to be able to pump efficiently. If the heart cannot get enough blood supply, then uh, the, it doesn't pump as well, and if you and then fluid builds up behind it like water behind a dam. The next organ system upstream from the heart is the lungs, and so the lungs can fill up with fluid, and pe a person can get shorter breath, and that really is their angina equivalent. Other signs can be breaking out in a cold sweat, nausea, lightheadedness. Uh, these are very subjective. Oftentimes what we tell people is when you have a different kind of a back pain, different kind of a chest pain, different kind of a nausea or indigestion, that is what one should be concerned about. The pains and discomfort can radiate to other areas. Uh, classically, it can go to the left arm, to the jaw, but it can go to the back or the stomach. So once one is concerned that one is having a, uh, one of these signs or symptoms of coronary artery disease, uh, what does one do? One, one should, uh, in an elective kind of a situation, uh, go see your physician where he may very well get a resting electrocardiogram, uh, get a chest x-ray to make sure there are no other issues that may be causing your symptoms, which could be an enlarged heart, could be a heart valve issue, could be an aneurysm. Uh, if this, the, everything leads towards your physician thinking that this is from coronary disease, then commonly they will do a stress test. Uh, this can either be uh, a treadmill test where you're exercising or your doctor can give you some medications uh, that stresses your heart. Either one of these, the goal is to get your pulse rate elevated. Uh, when you get your pulse rate elevated, uh, the heart is working harder, it's not getting in as much blood supply, uh, and uh, oftentimes the changes will occur in the EKG that are not present at rest. If this is positive or there are other reasons that your doctor is suspicious, then he may order an arteriogram. An arteriogram shows him the anatomy of the heart arteries, uh, and this classically uh, has been done uh, with a needle puncture into the groin uh, and then passing a catheter up into the uh, actual uh, beginnings of the coronary arteries, injecting dye and getting an x-ray picture of those. Now sometimes we are also getting or instead getting uh, CAT scan angiograms where the person gets the same kind of a dye into the veins of an arm and then go into a CAT scan machine and uh, are able to get a, a very good uh, arteriogram or picture of the anatomy of the arteries. These will show uh, where the blockages are, if there are blockages, uh, and once we have the anatomy down, then we can decide on a treatment plan. Be that treatment with medicines, be that or a decision being made to uh, revascularize or try to get more blood supply going down to the heart muscle, and this can be done either from the groin uh, using catheters and balloons or uh, going to surgery with coronary bypass surgery. So the picture on the left shows what a plaque in an artery looks like with some special staining and you can see the outside diameter uh, has stayed the same, it's nice and round and then you one has this real irregular thickening of the artery wall so that the amount of area available for blood to go through is much decreased. And as I said, these can be addressed through uh, percutaneous angioplasty where it means a balloon is put in and, and inflated, a stent can be put in, or coronary bypass surgery can be done. Occasionally, hybrid procedures will be done where some of the blockages are addressed with balloons and other ones uh, with coronary bypass surgery. So essentially, if, if a uh, percutaneous strategy has been decided as the best approach for uh, an individual person. What we do is once the cardiac cath shows the anatomy, uh, it is important to get a wire across the blockage. Uh, then once the wire is through, we can pass a balloon uh, into the area where the blockage is, and then we inflate the balloon. Uh, in this case, we're deploying a stent and once the stent has squished the 
narrowed area open, the stent uh, provides the structure to keep it open and more blood can pass through. So if you look at the, the before diagram and the after diagram, uh, it shows a marked improvement. Uh, the stents can be either bare metal or these days more uh, drug eluding stents. Uh, the, in this case, the stents actually have a chemical on their surface that will uh, tend to decrease the development of, of plaque and scar tissue in the stent itself. All the stents um, require uh, antiplatelet drugs being given afterwards to try to keep the, the risk of blood clots forming uh, down. These will oftentimes have to be uh, uh, taken for either many months or even several years. Uh, here is a diagram uh, of an actual cardiac cath, actually photographs of the cardiac cath showing a totally blocked artery here, this being the right coronary artery. Uh, in, this, in this case, they were able to get a balloon, a wire to go across the blockage, put a balloon uh, in, inflate it, and now you can see that there's blood going to this whole bottom surface of the heart. Clearly, many people would prefer to have uh, a procedure done from the groin rather than undergo surgery uh, and, sur and the uh, cardiologists are getting um, much more facile in deploying stents but when there are several areas of blockages and if there are certain locations like the left main coronary artery which is the very beginning of the left coronary artery uh, this really may not be a safe option. In those cases if it is felt that uh, some procedure needs to be done to get more circulation going down to the heart, then uh, surgical options are considered. Uh, mainly this means coronary artery bypass graft surgery or cabbage as we call it, uh, and these can be done either on pump using the cardiopulmonary uh, uh, by, uh, bypass machine, off pump, and we use as conduits or as grafts the internal mammary artery which is a paired a uh, set of arteries on either side of the sternum or breastbone, uh, or we can use greater saphenous veins that run on the uh, inside of the leg. And occasionally we will other, we use other alternative arterial conduits like the radial artery in the forearm or an artery from the stomach, but these would be unusual circumstances. The basic concept of coronary bypass surgery is basic plumbing. Essentially you've got a blockage that's preventing blood from going through and we bypass around the blockage. We don't really do anything at all uh, with the blockage itself. Uh, oftentimes these blockages are hidden under thick layers of fat or muscle and our goal is to bypass around them. So, uh, as, so in this case we have an internal mammary artery here coming from the subclavian artery of the artery going down to the arm and then it's uh, bypassing around where the blockage is here and sewn into the artery downstream from that. In this case it is a saphenous vein harvested from the leg and it's sewn to the aorta and the other end is sewn to the coronary artery downstream from the blockage. So essentially what happens is blood goes from the heart up into the aorta and then around the bypass grafts into the arteries, thus supplying more circulation to the heart muscle. Now coronary artery bypass graft surgery is not the only operation that heart surgeons do. Uh, obviously we can operate on the heart valves and repair those or replace those. There, occasionally there will be adult congenital uh, uh, problems that we will be uh, fixing, trauma, tumor, and more and more rhythm modification, atrial fibrillation, for example, uh, surgeries are done. Uh, at Memorial Hermann Heart and Vascular Institute Southwest, uh, this was a typical breakdown of our cases for the year. Uh, about 60% uh, of our cases, uh, surgeries were coronary artery bypass graft surgery with about 20% uh, being mitral valve surgery, 20% being aortic valve surgery, and many of those having concomitant or at the same time uh, coronary bypass graft surgery. 
Heart surgery, valve surgery can be any of the valves and they can either be replaced or repaired. Uh, they can either be mechanical uh, valves or they can be tissue valves made from the pericardium or sac around the heart from a cow or from the valve itself, aortic valve itself from a pig. And they are all done on pump. So the operation itself uh, uh, is a, requires a large team. Uh, here is a, a coronary bypass surgery in progress. Uh, one has the surgeon, an assistant, scrub nurse, circulating nurse, and tucked up here an anesthesiologist, and out of sight uh, here it would be a perfusionist. So that is the bare minimum number of people involved. Uh, while we're uh, on the heart-lung machine here, the machine itself provides oxygen like the lungs and, and pumps the blood back like the heart. And so uh, this machine keeps the patient alive while we are doing our uh, coronary bypasses. Uh, what's involved is we make an incision uh, in the breastbone. At the end, we wire it back together again. Uh, and that gives us good exposure of the heart. Uh, meanwhile, as we're getting uh, exposure uh, in the chest, uh, we are harvesting the vein from the leg. Uh, commonly now we're able to do this through a scope where we have small incisions at the knee, a small incision in the groin, uh, and we're able to harvest the vein that way. An actual picture of how the vein looks uh, while uh, it is being harvested, as you can see, uh, the saphenous vein here branches uh, coming off of it that are able to be uh, divided uh, through the scope and in this way we can tunnel this out and, and harvest it with hopefully less discomfort postoperatively uh, and a decreased incidence of leg infections and other problems that everybody has heard about having and so we're trying to make it a better uh, procedure. Another picture of what coronary bypass surgery looks like so everybody knows the heart is located in the middle and a little left to the left of midline. So our sternal incision here gives us great exposure of it. Again, the internal mammary artery comes off of the artery going to the arm and is sewn to the coronary artery downstream from where the blockage is. And similarly in this diagram, the use of the vein uh, comes from the aorta and the other end is sewn to the coronary arteries. And so we can do a multitude of bypasses uh, to the right coronary artery here using the internal mammary artery to the artery going down the front. Commonly we will be doing a vein graft to a side branch of this artery in the front and also to the artery going on around the left hand side. And again uh, to demonstrate the number of people that are involved uh, in doing uh, the surgery. Uh, and once the surgery is done, we then go to the intensive care unit uh, and we monitor several different pressures and, and, uh, and other items. We monitor the pulse rate, EKG here. Oftentimes people are asking us, uh, what are all these different colored tracings? And so we monitor the pulse rate, we monitor the blood pressure. We have a special catheter inside the heart that we monitor some of the pressures inside the heart as well as things like the oxygen concentration of the blood and the temperature of the patient. The Society of Thoracic Surgeons is a national and international organization that is dedicated to the uh, to the care of thoracic surgeons, uh, of their patients, to their patients. Uh, and many years ago, they decided to start collecting data as far as mortality rate or uh, infections, strokes, and all of the other uh, important information about uh, heart surgery. And this has now developed into really the largest medical database in the world uh, with approximately 940 uh, centers mostly nationally in the United States, though now worldwide, and they monitor approximately 160,000 coronary artery bypass grafts surgeries per year. So this is uh, collected and added to, and so it really is a huge number of patients that are being monitored. It is a standardized uh, 
data collection forms that we use that are many pages. Uh, and so by analyzing the information, uh, they're able to come up with best practice strategies that they then will uh, return to us. They compare the individual hospital data to similar size hospitals in their region and nationally and then complete the loop and give us back uh, our information so we know how our hospital then compares with other hospitals. For example, uh, isolated coronary artery bypass graft surgery, that means people that come in for uh, coronary bypass surgery, uh, and one can see here that our mortality rate uh, at 1.2 percent is less than uh, similar hospitals around the country and uh, and less than the overall STS or mortality rate. So they have instituted a STAR report uh, and Memorial Hermann Heart and Vascular Institute Southwest has received uh, the highest ranking that they have which is three stars. It's reported twice a year and each star reflects the previous uh, 12 months of data. Uh, they, uh, they judge the hospitals on uh, avoidance of mortality, avoidance of morbidity, which means complications, uh, some surgical the use of internal mammary arteries, and whether the person is given the appropriate uh, medications. I wanted to, uh, towards the end of this talk, uh, reiterate the importance of being able to identify uh, coronary artery disease and to uh, that one should develop an action plan so that one knows what to do when it does occur. It is such a common problem that it is likely that any one of us is going to either with ourselves or with a family member, a neighbor, or uh, someone one just happens to run into in a restaurant or something, be faced with being in the situation. So we think that having an action plan can save lives. Before an emergency occurs, identify a chest pain centers in your area. Keep a list of emergency numbers next to your phone and really with you at all times. Know the signs and symptoms. Again, to go over this again, the signs and symptoms of coronary disease are chest pain or pressure, angina equivalents which can, which can be jaw pain, arm pain, back pain that is different from everybody's usual back pain or indigestion, shortness of breath, don't forget about, an irregular heartbeat. If somebody is having some of these symptoms, feel their pulse at their wrist. Uh, and remember these symptoms can occur at, with exercise or at rest. If you or someone close to you is showing the signs of a heart attack, immediately call 911 or the local emergency medical services. Tell them that you think that you are or someone else is having a heart attack. Take an aspirin. It's the best thing to do. If there's no access to EMS, have someone other than the person having symptoms drive them to the hospital right away. By acquiring and achieving uh, the three-star ranking, Memorial Hermann Heart and Vascular Institute at Southwest Memorial Hospital is ranked in the top 10% in the nation for quality in heart bypass surgery. Our team of cardiovascular surgeons and cardiovascular anesthesiologists wish you and your family and friends a long and safe life. Please pay attention.